Oh, it's not a question actually. Just a few points that I would like to to stress out. Um, um, Mark spoke about the issue of condoms in schools uh, <coughs> as a as a tool of preventative in in South Africa. As treatment action campaign, we are we are we are engaging the government on that policy to be pushed to be out and condoms should be provided at school because we are see we see a lot of young uh, women being infected by HIV and <coughs> we still have problems there especially in Gauteng where the MEC of health is not willing to give out condoms in schools so there is a big debate around that but uh, we, 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 we are saying yes to condom in school maybe that will uh, uh, at least uh, decrease the number of young women who are getting infected by HIV because there are a lot of factors that are making these women to be uh, to be uh, infected by HIV. And then to the issue of uh, disclosure that the Liu uh, talked about, uh, especially to young people, uh, that's, that's that's a big. Uh, uh, that that's a big issue in South Africa. A lot of young uh, young young adolescent uh, uh, they don't know their status and they don't know how to the parents they don't know how to disclose to their children and we are seeing a lot of cases where they they they, they are not uh, adhering to, to 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 their treatment. For instance, uh, in few weeks ago, I was visiting one of the hospitals, of which I see three young girls lying in the in uh, in in hospital without they they, they are not adhering to to their treatment and <coughs> they are not accepting their status because they don't they are still angry about why they are why they are HIV positive and there's no psychological support that is given to them. So I think we need to we need to focus more on young people than. <coughs> Uh, like than what we are doing now, and the issue of mental illness, uh, especially to people who are living with HIV. A lot of them in in Gauteng, we are seeing 30 percent. We are having 30 percent uh, people who are not uh, adhering to their treatment. Of which that means there is a psychological support that it's needed for those people. So yeah, those are, are my points for now. Does any of you want to comment on that in the panel? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for excellent presentations. Uh, I would just ask you, who are working in the field, uh, how much are you helped by these uh, UNAIDS uh, goals, 1990, 90, uh, for example, which to me, 1990 by 2020, which is uh, nice figures in a way, but. Uh, how realistic are they, and how 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 are you helped by by these figures? 1990, 90, we have reached it in Sweden, where we have the best results in the world of of treatment. Uh, but in United States, for example, they have they are far away from from reach, having reached that uh, after a lot of years, and so. Is it is is it hampering you or is it helping you? Is it a good tool? Yeah. Yeah. No. Maybe I might uh, take it up. Um, indeed, uh, we are usually a bit scared of, of big targets that really show somewhere that we're nearly towards uh, reaching that that goal. On the other hand, I think uh, it's a powerful uh, catchment uh, sentence by which somewhere it summarizes very much what needs to be done. We need first to catch the people and test them, we need to put them on treatment, we have to keep them on treatment. It's the first time I think that we have a sentence like this that also can summarize um, the, the complexity of, of a chronic treatment. And I was in August in uh, KwaZulu-Natal and I met the district authorities there and I was very surprised that a few months after that UNAIDS had come out, they already knew about it and they were proud to say that thanks to MSF they had already realized this cascade logic. I think um, having these goals, these targets, help us to evaluate, and that's now what we've decided to do. We evaluate together with health healthcare workers where they are in every health center with their own cohort, with their own number of patients. How many of them should you have tested? Have you tested? How many of them are already on treatment and should you have on treatment? How many of them have an undetectable viral load? This is a very powerful uh, message and uh, exercise, analysis that we do together with the healthcare workers to make them realising afterwards why 
we want to invest in counseling, why we want to get them out in the community for testing the people and so on. It's a powerful way of looking where we are and knowing where we are, making you aware about where the priorities are is a powerful planning tool. So yes, I would say it's helpful, but it's not uh, by saying that we should now uh, uh, rest and uh, look back at what we've done up to now. Saliva, what would you say? Would it help you when, or, or other councillors in, uh, in getting support, getting funding? Uh, for now, I would say the 1990 call is good, but the problem now is that since the councillors are phased out, who, who's going to be mm. testing these people? Mm. And who's going to be providing adherence counselling? Because as much as we want to put more people on treatment, but if we are failing to retain them, it will be pointless. And uh, I think maybe our government needs to look at that point and see what can be improved. Yes. Uh, yes, please. Mm, uh, is <laughs> Hi, I'm Anna Rambe. Uh, thank you for very interesting presentations. I work with RFSU, which is the Swedish Association for Sexuality Education, and I've also worked for a number of years with the, the Noah's Ark. Um, I was wondering about uh, the gender ratio among the lay councillors. It was uh, touched upon several times already in this morning, the importance of, of uh, involving men uh, in the fight against HIV. So I was wondering whether there is a strategy to include men uh, in the recruitment to lay counselors as part of involving men and, and being able to address uh, men uh, by men uh, in this, uh, when, when you do your work as lay counselors. And also I was wondering whether there is any specific LGBT training or component in the lay counselor training to address some of the specific uh, issues that might be relevant for this, as we also heard in the morning, very vulnerable uh, key population. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Saar, do you want to take <coughs> Yeah. Um, good question. Uh, I don't think we have a, a clearly thought through strategy to ensure that there's a good gender balance between our, uh, within our lay counselors group. I don't know how it is in a show, but definitely in, uh, in other projects, we do have quite a lot of, uh, quite a number of, of men uh, who are lay counselors, but I think it could be interesting for us to, to look, into, uh, look into this a bit to see if that, uh, that is well addressed. Um, in certain projects or uh, yeah, according to certain strategies, we do recruit specifically men, for example, like in, in Kailicha, South Africa, uh, there is, uh, we have a male clinic and there they really try to attract male counsellors uh, to ensure that they can, uh, they can um, talk to the issues of, of men. Uh, but in general, for the general population, we haven't addressed it as such as a, as a clear strategy. Um, when it comes to key populations, as you say, um, uh, uh, working with MSM and, and I would even expand it working with sex workers. I think we clearly see that for our own staff uh, there is an issue of, of ensuring that we address uh, attitudes and, and values regarding to this key population uh, for them as well. Uh, it's not because they're a lane counsellor that they're all open to that and feel at ease to work uh, with these groups. Um, and I think what we also try to do uh, to reach this group and, and to ensure that we, we get into their social structure is that we have um, we have others, what we call them, more peer counsellors, like commercial sex workers, uh, who actually do the social uh, social mobilisation, who ensure that uh, their peers are aware that we're that we're coming over for HIV testing, or uh, that they can address us for for this and this uh, cases. But definitely, there's there's a clear idea needed on ensuring that we work on attitudes and norms of our own staff, not only lay counsellors but also our medical staff. Uh, I'd say. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I. I think, do we have one more question or let's make that the last question because after that we'll go for lunch and there will be more opportunities to ask questions in the afternoon as well. Okay, hello. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering because I know that in Africa people are... Sorry, uh, would you mind just telling us who you are? Ah. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> I am Hadi, but I, I, come, I was studying a uh, master in palliative care at Sofia Hemet. And I come from Senegal originally. I was just wondering uh, if you are working with church or because we know that in Africa people are very religion oriented. 
and we have a lot of issue related to using uh, condoms and I know that uh, HIV is still uh, uh, associated to mm. sex uh, and it has mm. a big taboo and I want to know if you are working closely with those uh, uh, communities, religious communities. Are you working yeah. together with the church or is the church working against you? Okay, on that point, uh, <laughs> our project, we started to engage with churches, with uh, chiefs in the community, and to the point we are also participating if there are the male uh, meeting, male in meetings in the community whereby we will, one of our community health agents will go and visit and be part of the meeting and afterwards the males will be offered HIV and counseling and testing by another male who was the part of that meeting. But we are engaging with all the, uh, I mean the churches, all the, the stakeholders that play a huge role in the community, we engage with them. And we also do trainings for them or in workshops that is capacitating them about HIV. Mm. Yeah, but but sure. we do face problems indeed. I remember Lesotho where, well, we were not able in a very prone, Catholic prone uh, district to condomize or to promote even family planning. So we are struggling and indeed we need them to think out of the box again. And in fact, what we just do is to put our services just outside of the health center that is run by the Catholic services. They do an excellent job, but they are quite stubborn on that aspect. And it went to even writing to the Pope and we got an answer back from the Vatican saying that they would consider our concerns. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Sounds now like we need to fight progress. on that. <laughs> Thank you very much.